In this lesson, we'll explore some more tools available to the LXI Cloud software, such as new shape tools, the distort tool, and the text on curve tool. Our goal in this lesson is to create this design. To begin, here we have already started a new blank drawing. The only thing we have to change is the design area. So let's go to Design Central and set the size. We'll make the width 20 inches and set the drawing height to 7 inches. This gives us the limitations of our design area. Next, let's bring out the toolbars that we will be using in this lesson. To do this, let's right click on the bar here and open the Text Create toolbar. Right click again and select the Shapes toolbar. Right click again and select the Combine Effects toolbar. Right click one more time and select the Effects toolbar. Once again, bringing out the toolbars just makes it easier to access the tools that we'll be using during this lesson. And really, this makes designing more efficient. The first item to create is the kite. In this demo, we'll be using a new shape tool, the Polygon tool. Let's go over some steps on creating a polygon, as well as a starburst, and creating an advanced border. Let's start with the polygon. To draw a polygon, click on the polygon tool, and then click, hold, and drag the mouse, and the polygon starts forming from the center. Release the mouse when the polygon is to our liking. In Design Central, we can adjust the width and height as we want. We can also adjust the number of sides from 3 on up. Looking at the polygon while the polygon tool is selected, there are two control handles to shape the polygon. The first controls the bend on all the segments, whether outwards or inwards. The other control points will create some fascinating structures that you may be able to use. Let's draw a starburst using the same method. Click on the starburst tool, click, hold, and drag the mouse to form a star. Release the mouse when the star is to our liking. In Design Central we can adjust the different variables to shape the star, such as the number of points of the star. There are other values, such as the top value, which increases the diameter of the inner part of the star, and the second value, which expands the outer diameter of the star. The last value is called the spike twist. There is no way to describe this, so we can just change the value and see what it affects. When looking at the star, it too has control points that can affect the look. For instance, the point at the very tip will affect the length of all the outer points. This inner corner grab handle of the star affects the overall size. The inner segment points will affect the star in different ways where you may end up with a flower of some sort. Turning the fill off momentarily allows us to see what the cutting path will do. The last shape is the advanced borders. If you regularly use borders in your signs, this is a feature that you will probably use. If we click on the tool, we can easily draw the border the same way we drew the polygon and star. Click, hold, and drag the mouse pointer, and when the border is to the desired size, release the mouse button. In Design Central, we can adjust the different variables to shape the border including the height and width, border thickness, whether to have an inner border or not, and the border shape pull-down list which provides a sample of what the border will look like. What's nice is this button here which allows us to add our own border. In other words, we can create borders that we like to use and add them to the library of borders that is provided with the LXI Expert software. Let's go ahead and delete this and start on the design. 
First, we'll need to create two cross guides, one vertical and one horizontal. This is key since the kite will be created using these guides. We'll drag a guide from the top ruler and place it just above the middle and then drag a vertical guide from the side ruler and place it in the center of the drawing area border. Next we will draw a polygon, so let's click on the polygon tool. Before we draw the polygon, let's set the polygon sides to 4 so that we will draw a diamond. Using the intersections of the guides, we can start to draw the four-sided polygon. You may be thinking that this is just a square, so why not use the rectangle tool? The reason is that when making a polygon, we are able to rotate it while it is being created. In this case, we can just move our mouse and rotate it 90 degrees. If we were to use the rectangle tool, we'd have added steps. Here we can use the guides to create a diamond, the basis for our kite. Let's go ahead and set the color to a medium green. In order to make the kite, we're going to have to stretch the bottom point of the diamond down to make the shape of a kite. Since the diamond is considered a polygon, we need to convert it to an outline, which basically allows us to reshape the diamond. To do this, we will click on the Arrange pull-down menu and click on Convert to Outline. Now we can take the Path and Point Edit tool and drag the bottom point to stretch it out to create a kite-shaped object, once again using the vertical guide to keep it aligned. In our kite, we want to create a cross shape to resemble a kite a little more. We can use a path to do this and then use the path to cut out the cross pattern. Let's first grab the Line Curve tool. Click the first point to the left of the kite. Click the second point to the right of the kite. Click above the kite. And finally click below the kite. Notice that we have consistently used the guides through this process. This shows how valuable guides can be. We need to make the path more visible and thicker. In Design Central, we will set the path to show and make it thicker by increasing this value. It doesn't have to be too thick since we really just want a thin line. The next step is to change the path stroke to an outline. Currently, the path is considered a simple stroke despite the thickness. We need to convert it from a single path to a path that outlines the stroke thickness. We can do this by clicking on the Arrange pull-down menu and selecting Convert Stroke to Outline. Now that our path is outlined, we can use it for a stencil to cut out the kite. This is where some of the combine effects can be applied to separate or merge portions of selected objects that are overlapping. To understand how each combine effect works, let's switch over to a drawing which has similar shapes of a circle and star. Let's start with the first circle and star by selecting them and then choosing the weld effect. It welds them together so that they are one object. Notice also that if there are different colored objects, the frontmost object's color is the color of the welded object. The next combine effect is the weld by color. When applied, it welds all overlapping objects of similar color. To show this, we can turn fills off where we can see that the red shapes are welded as one, and the blue shapes are welded as another object. The next effect is the cut out effect. This is the one we will be using for our kite. When this is applied, the top object cuts or stencils out the portion of the bottom shape that it overlaps, as in this case where the overlapping portion of the star is cut out of the circle. The next effect is the Remove Overlap. When applied, it does exactly as the Cut Out effect, except it keeps the front object, in this case the star, but cuts out the portion that overlaps the underlying object, in this case the circle. The Common effect, when selected, deletes all of the selected objects except for the overlapping portions. The Exclude Common effect, when applied, 
deletes all of the overlapping portions of the selected objects. The Fuse effect, when applied, removes all of the frontmost objects except for the portions that are overlapping the object behind it. Separate Overlap, the last effect, when applied, creates new objects from overlapped areas of selected objects.